Hello and welcome, beautiful people of the internet. My name is Michael Creek, and today, once again, we jump into the world of Max MSP. I'm sorry it's been some time. I got really caught up with my real life studies and things I have to do. But today it's Sunday. I have a bit of time to waste. I also have some of those uh, rice waffles and tea. So I am feeling all peachy. All right. Uh, what we want to do today is start patching a bit with the Kinect. I got one Microsoft Kinect right over here. Those things don't cost as much anymore. You can get them for less than 100 bucks. And they are amazing because they can do something that other cameras can't do. And we're going to look at this today. But first of all, uh, let's start with some very basic jitter video stuff. Let's create a jitter movie. Um, and give it the argument 640 and 480, four dimensions. Uh, to see what's going on, we might want a jit.p window. All right. Okay, so here's the deal. I am currently working on a video uh, patcher that I'm going to use with the band that I play with live. And what I really want to do is project some kind of video onto our actual bodies during the performance using the Kinect. So um, to do this, we need to first understand uh, projection. You know, Sigmund Freud says, if you project, that means that there is something you hate about yourself. And so instead of accepting that that is a part of you, you project it onto other people, meaning you pretend that they are the ones who are whatever it is that your main problem is. So what I'm going to do is a first time in history, I am going to use Jitter movies to project what I hate most about myself onto myself. So psychologically, I am producing an endless projection loop. See? See what I did there? And for that to work, um, I need to work out what I really hate about me. And what I hate is that I am just lazy all of the time. So I did find some videos on the internet representing me and I think that this one just hits the spot. To get this to run we need to do th two things. First of all read it in which we're doing right now and it's part of my project that I've created earlier here so that's why Max is going to know which file it will have to look up. But then also we need to get it running for that to take a Q metro which is basically a metro that is not quite as much a diva. So the Q metro will be um, okay with deferring its bangs that it's sending when the computer is experiencing heavy loads um, as opposed to the normal metro, which would just straight up crash your fucking computer whenever it can't handle all the data. And there's gonna be a lot of data handled. So we'll take one of these, all 20 milliseconds, Put a trigger up there and start banging the video like this. And now I think we should see something. Or maybe this is not part of my project as of yet. Let's see. We'll save this first. Uh, sloth stuff. And then I'm going to add it to my project. All right, now when I hit read sloth, let's start this once again and check it out. Nope, still not working. Why is it not working? I don't know. We'll just do it the old way then. All right, got it. So um, you can see this is a compilation of sloth videos. Oh, they are so adorable. And what I'm going to do is we're going to take a second video so we can uh, basically copy, let's say, all of these things here, hook up the Q Metro, and read a different file in there, which is going to be a busy street somewhere in India, I think. I just got this off the web, so whatever. But you see. Busy people, 
and me. Now we're going to put this stuff together and a very easy way to do that is the JIT Alpha Blend. Um, Alpha Blend will blend a movie in the left inlet over a movie in the right inlet depending on its alpha value. And um, as you will see when we do this right now, it's going to not look very interesting because all we see is the left video. And that's because the alpha value of the left video is really, really high. Um, so what is that anyway? Each movie that we see here in Jitter usually actually consists of four different matrices that um, coexist happily and peacefully. Um, the four corresponding matrices are the alpha and then RGB, which is red, green, and blue. So you have alpha and then RGB, like this. All right. So when I hook up P windows here, we can see those four channels independently. So just the blue value would look like this just the red like this, just, oh, that was green, that is red, and now here comes the alpha. Uh, you might wonder, well, this doesn't look red and this doesn't look green at all, and that's correct, because actually what these jitter matrices represent is nothing else than values between zero and one. So when we hook up a jit.cell block, we should be able to see What? Ah, yeah, here you go. Um, you will see depending on, you know, this is just the very, very, very top left part of the matrix, something like this. Um, you can see that there is a lot of values and they go from zero to 255. Um, and that just means this part of the video is this much red and this much green and this much blue. And then when you add it all together, you actually have a calculation that replaces these values with the actual colors. And then you get, in the end, this multicolored thing again. And the first value you can see is different. That is our alpha channel. And right now, the alpha channel in every single piece says 255, which is the highest value you can have. Uh, and that is because alpha usually represents um, transparency, and you don't want your video to be transparent normally. But we can abuse this thing. So let me kindly delete this. We're going to just pack that stuff up again. But instead of using our good old usual alpha value, we are going to use what we get from our connect. Now for this, we will have to do some installing stuff. So um, there is an object I'm going to I'm going to put a link somewhere. I think um, this is an object that a very devoted Max member has once created, and it's a freaking awesome. Unfortunately, I think this is Mac only. So if you use a Windows PC, um, you might have to look for a substitute. But frankly, I don't care. Just get yourself a Mac, like all the grown-up people. Come on. Um, the jitfreenect.grab object does a whole lot of things for us. First of all, we're going to give it some attributes like at mode 2, which will straight up change the data that we get out of it. Uh, then also, like a video, it needs to be banged quite often, so um, we're going to hook it up with our QMetro. Um, you will have to explicitly tell your JIT free neck object to open and to close. And you should be very careful with that. First, you need to connect your Kinect to your PC via USB. Then you hit open and start banging it. Because um, when you do some wonky stuff, when you try to open it in multiple instances, for example, at the same time, or you try other shenanigans, you screw up the order of things, then you're going to crash and you're going to crash really bad. So I'm going to save right now because this object can sometimes straight up destroy your things. So uh, when I hook up a P window here, 
we will see that we see nothing yet. And then I open the connect. Ah, and there we are. Wonderful. So what is a connect? Um, a connect has a regular camera. I think you can get it here. Yeah, that's correct. So hey, that's me in my studio. And um, that is not what's interesting, though, that you know, your own Mac has a camera like that. We don't need that. We really want to have this one. And this is um, very cool and unique to the Kinect in comparison to your normal computer video thingies in that it is not a camera that takes photos like pictures, but instead it measures the distance between the Kinect and you. So the difference is usually with any, uh, with any image like this, for example, it doesn't really tell you how far away the sloth is from the camera. It just tells you for every pixel what colors it is supposed to display. And then our eyes kind of interpret these colors that we see and we get this kind of visual feeling of what is far away and what's not. But those pictures are perfectly flat. And that's because a camera can't see distances. It can just see colors. But this thing here works differently. It's not a camera. It's actually a lot of very small laser sensors and they send out laser rays like in every direction. And then they wait for the laser rays to be bounced back by a hard object that they fly against. And then they come back into the receptor. And then it just measures the time that those laser rays take and then it creates this kind of picture, which is just an abstract representation of how long it took every single laser ray to come back. So you can see objects that are closer are lighter and objects that are farther away are darker. So I will move away from the connect for a moment and you will see that I become more and more gray and dark. All right. And this means that this picture we get here is not like this four matrices all wrapped in one, but it's just one matrix. And it's going to give you values between zero and one because we are in mode two and mode two normalizes the values, which means one is like the lightest that it can display and it's the closest that it can measure. It stops somewhere when you see my hand getting closer. This is like where it kind of bugs out because it's too close to the connect. But here you have like a color that is almost perfect white, which is a one in jitter terms. And then the further away you go, the lower the number goes like 0 0.654321 and so on. Um, we could just kind of hook this up and see what's happening here. But instead, we're going to do some more filtering. Um, for example, I want it to be that you can't see everything, but you just see my beautiful body on this image. And for that, you could do a simple operation. You just take a jit.op for operation, say add operation uh, greater than, and then you give it maybe an arbitrary starting value like this. And then the starting value we're going to adjust here. And the matrix goes in here. And now what's going to come out of there is going to be for every point in the matrix, it's going to look, is the value of this pixel higher than <laughs> and higher means in terms of our 3D camera closer than because you know, this is like a one and then you get the further away you go, you get smaller numbers. So basically we're just going to give it a threshold that it can surpass. And what the operation does is when it when the data surpasses the threshold, it jumps to one. And when it's below the threshold, it jumps to zero. So from this kind of grayscale image, we get something called a binary image, which is just ones and zeros for the pixels that meet the criteria of being close enough and those that are not close enough. And it looks like this. You can see right now, almost everything we have is here because I didn't set a good value. But once you move it and move it and move it, you can see more and more stuff in the background disappear until we are here with a value that means when I move away from the computer, I'm going to disappear at some point. That, that's it. Now I'm gone and now I'm back. 
Actually, I'm going to move this even a bit higher, maybe like this. And now when I move away, I instantly disappear and reappear. So that's already kind of neat. Um, uh, yes. Do we need anything else? No, I think not. There is an object you're going to have to learn to love when you want to work with matrices, and that is jit.fps. GUI. Um, this one is kind of there for measuring your frames per second. But also you can see how many planes your matrix has. This is just the one. And also what's uh, kind of important sometimes the dimensions. This is good enough. That fits. That's nice. We don't have to do any adjusting and the type. And you can see that our matrix right now is a float 32 thingy. And the problem is that when we look at the alpha channel, you can see it's a char. So when we hook up this in here, oh, it works. No, it doesn't really work because you can see um, uh, I am already part of in the image, but there is no video playing in it. It's just black. So um, what we need to do is a simple conversion. So just make a jit.matrix object, give it a name like sloth, say it has one planes. The plane is supposed to be in the char and give it the dimensions. I hope this is correct. So now all we do is we change the type from uh, float32, which is floating point 0 to 1.0 to char, which is 0 to 255. And then we add it back there and oh, that is freaking funky. Oh, oh, oh okay. So what happens now is, um, <laughs> actually, I love this. Wait, let, let, let's see this in all its glory. Let's make a window. Uh, give it at floating one. And take a key, make a key object, which is going to track your keyboard inputs. Select 27, which should be escape. And then hang on there a trigger. So now whenever I hit escape, it's going to yep, on and off the trigger. And then put a message down there which says full screen dollar one. Boom. Put that in your window, make it disappear with a command shift E. Call it full screen green like you are some kind of script kitty hacker and now when I hit escape yes we can see this and now we just feed this into our window and hit escape for the full screen oh this is amazing so you can see um uh, the video of India is actually still playing but because I messed up my alpha matrix um the x value of our pixels is six so we just have six pixels in this direction but 480 in this direction i'm going to be totally use this for my video show um, but nevertheless i'm going to correct this issue and replace this weird thing with the four yes and there we are in all our glory you can see busy people in india being productive and everything and then in the middle there's me just you know the sloth that i am ah Wonderful. So wonderful. Oh, look, look, it's, it's kind of smiling. Man, it's, it's like I'm in a video of the Frank. All right. Uh, that's all we wanted to do today. And I'm going to spice this stuff up a bit more, maybe apply some video effects, because you can see right now, um, we are kind of, wait, let me move this a bit. Yes. Uh, right now we are kind of, um, the videos kind of look too much alike, so it's hard to, to tell them apart. It's kind of confusing for the eyes. So um, you could do stuff like maybe um, make RGB to Luma, which just turns your four matrices into two, I think, because you remove all the colors and just have a grayscale. And it looks like this. Now you can see. Now it's a metaphor on life. 
all these people moving about in their life, you know, just gray kind of workers. And then in the middle, there's me. Have a great Sunday, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you.